Hey guys and girls, whoa, 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 whoa. welcome back to example videos here that we're making. Um, this is example 08. This is a really short, nice, simple example on uh, for loops. And uh, we went through some while loops the last time and you saw that while loops use some conditions here. While something is true, it's going to keep going. If that condition is false, it's going to break out of the loop. Now the thing is, we need for loops to actually uh, go through and loop a certain number of times. That's the thing. And uh, if you want to if you want to loop through maybe 10 times you can do that or whatever. You could do that with while loops uh, while loops as well, but for loops are a lot more convenient and really good to use if you want to add numbers together quickly and things. Just really awesome thing to know. And uh, I'm sure you'll find good uses for it, but let's just go ahead and start. What we're going to make is we're going to make a dice thrower game. Um, the user is going to input the size of the die and it's going to input how many times to throw it and the for loop is going to take care of the rest. So and, and then we can as well add all those numbers together and display a total in the bottom. So what we're going to start to do is we're going to use integers. We're going to use integers number of throws. Okay. Initialize all your stuff. Good to have uh, good habits from the start and uh, make sure you have big letters in between, not underscores and things like that, because that's not a good habit. It makes it harder to read and uh, just not good for other programmers to read your code. Um, well, number of throws. Then we're going to have size of dice. Okay. And then we might have a total in the end. And what we're going to need, I think we're going to need a, a result as well. So, because we're going to have to use the random number several times. But, yeah, okay, let's start with the for loop. So, remember, while was like this. For loop is exactly the same. Just a nice, simple little for here. And inside, what we're going to do here is the different thing here. We're going to make a counter, okay? An integer with the name i that starts from 0. You can do, you can play around with this. You can start from any number you want. Doesn't matter, but 0 is, is standard, of course. And then while this is the condition, while it's less than number of throws, we're going to increment i. And this i++ plus plus is the same thing as this and this. Okay, so what it does is adds 1 to i. And this is really good to know. You can use this, you can use this, you can use this, whatever you want. But this is the shortest version, and it's really good. And you can use it in any situation. And that's awesome. If Whenever you want to increment something once. There is another variant of it where you have the two plus signs in the beginning, but I'm sure we'll go through that sometime as well. Uh, but for now, we'll stick to this. So, we have everything set up. We're going to have to write uh, our total in the end. Okay. Let's make sure the user knows what's going on as usual. So, the total is compliant. Oh, I'm sorry. I should zoom in as well. I should zoom in. This is this is fine, I think. Um, so yeah, number of throws, result total, our for loop, our for loop, like I said, counter, condition, and the increment. So this is going to go through from zero, and then check the condition, okay, zero is less than, say we input five, zero is less than five, okay, add one. Now i is one. One is still less than five, now the next loop, two is less than five, next loop, and it'll go on until this condition is false and then it'll just jump out so perfect now we know what a for loop is and now we're gonna tell the user to um, bro please input the number of of throws man oh let's just do that bam and then we'll see in that okay and then we will Say, we'll be lazy again here. We'll be lazy. Input the uh, size of the die. I think you write die, right? When you mean one? Oh, I'm not sure, but we'll say. We'll see, we'll see. We'll say die. Uh, size of, then that should be size of die, but whatever. Uh, we got that. And now what? See? We have these two things we needed. Now it's going to go through here until, say, we input it five here. We can assume that we input something here, as long as we input something correct, not a character or like something minus 5 or something, we should be fine. 
if you input the negative number it just won't go into the loop at all it will check the condition okay whatever is one is zero is uh, not less than minus five so peace out you know it's gonna go back here um but let's just go in here and see now what we're gonna do is print um all the dice throws so let's see here size of dice dice plus one of course um because all dice start from one i think uh so we're gonna do that actually you know what that's why we had result this is a good practice if you're gonna use something twice especially a random number put it into a variable first and then use it throughout the for the loop uh so we'll do result okay result and then can do that and actually and then total is always going to be what it was plus uh, the result we got whoops what happened there um, like that so okay what should happen now is that we get the let's see here okay let's say 10 throws with a 10 sided die so yeah it seems correct seems correct and the total is 60 I don't want to count that but I'm pretty sure it's 60 so uh, yeah there you go guys I mean I zoomed in here you can zoom out a little bit so you see the whole program um, yeah so really simple nice now you know about four loops we're gonna be using that in the next example I think so uh, it's really good really really good to know and thank you for watching and I uh, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video bye bye